going on, Arlen? Let's go, Arlen. Yeah. I'll be back. Yeah. So, so basically, for me, you know, I, uh, like Alfred said, I, you know, I've, I've known Alfred since day one, um, and uh, you know, I've always been the, the 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 type to just help out, you know, newly licensed agents, and you know, or or always uh, willing to to network and just mastermind and brainstorm with even the people that are doing way better than me. So I just wanted to learn. Um, and with that said is just keep your, keep, keep being learning a uh, base, you know, like just keep putting yourself into classrooms. You know, there's, there's no need to reinvent the wheel, right? There's always someone that's doing it. There's doing bigger and better things than you go learn from them, you know, go learn as much as you can come and apply to your business and then teach it. You know, don't hold on to it. There's no, there's no, there's no need to like, Oh, I can tell, I can teach you how I got 10 listens this month. Uh, that that that's limited mindset, you know, of like, if I teach you, you're going to take the business away from me. That's, there's plenty to go around, you know? So, so uh, yesterday I took a class in, in, in social media, you know, how the algorithms are, have, have changed and so forth. And um, I'm, I'm going to share all my notes and um, I might actually even have the recording. I'll share it with Alfred so he can share it with all of you guys since he has all of you guys information. Um, it, it's, it's tweaking whatever it is that you're doing, just, you know, just one little adjustment that can take you to, to over that, over that wall, over the hump, you know, that, 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 you know, the wall that, that you're breaking. So uh, just, you know, learning, just constantly learning. I, like I told Alfred, you know, right now, what I'm noticing is I always like to study the market. You know, for example, you know, Alexander, if I was to tell you how many listens are in your market right now, you got to be able to say, Hey, has on Monday, there was 175 listens in my market. Great. Uh, how, how many of those have, have been sitting in the market longer than 30 days? You know what I mean? Because this is stuff that we need to know so that when we go, like you know, Jonathan Alfred did, go to a listen appointment, you you are the expert. They're relying on our knowledge. And if our knowledge is not to the fullest, then what are we really bringing to the table to these people? You know, they're trusting us. We're like their biggest, biggest asset, right? And so the the, the best we can do is, the, the, is what we owe to them is be fully prepared for that. So how many listens are on the market in your market center? What's the average day on the market in your market center? You know, how many of these homes are going into escrow? How many of these escrow homes are, you know, like not going through? Because this tells you where the market is going. Like right now, I'll tell you right now, in my market center, I'm seeing a lot of price reductions already. And I'm seeing the inventory creeping up. So that tells me the market is just around the corner from doing some shifting. And if you're not prepared for that shifting, then you're going to overprice listings. Then your listings are going to be sitting in the market for a long time. And Alfred and I have this conversation from time to time, right? Alfred's like, hey, you know, this this is going on with this list. What can I do? What should I do? And he's having those uncomfortable conversations. You know, last week I walked away from two listings because they want to overprice them. I'm giving them all the data and they still want to overprice it. You know, and I said, I'm really sorry. You know, I I, I, I take pride in what I do. And I couldn't go and, 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 and sell a Toyota Corolla at a Lamborghini's price because no one's going to buy it. Ar Arlen, quick, quick question, brother. I'm so sorry yes, to sir. interrupt you. No, uh, it's, inter it's interesting that you say that because this is what I've been kind of noticing. Um, a lot of the listings when I go online just to browse or, or to look for something for my client, I've noticed yeah. that, um, that a lot of people are discounting their listings. Yes. Um, and even my own client, he's like, hey, I know now like in, we were in Big Bear. He said, I know mm -hmm. now that the market, he used the word saturated. Yeah. And I did tell him, oh, I don't know if it's saturated, but definitely more listings are coming on the market. But mm -hmm. my question is, what what do you say to a client when he says, hey, um, I still want to price my property at a, at a certain price because it's worth it. It's remodeled. It's nice. Whatever he thinks. But mm -hmm. you know that in that market, that price is not justified. Okay, so I, I I'll address it in a sense of like you know you, you know Mister uh, Hurtado the 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 fact that the the matter the fact is that the your home is going to be worth but the buyer is willing to pay for it. It's not it's not you it's not me it's ultimately not even the appraiser that's going to dictate the price it's what a buyer is willing to pay. Now I know you've done an amazing thing in remodeling your home. I love it. I personally will give you even more than what you're asking for because it's my taste. However, your taste, my taste doesn't mean that it's going to be the buyer's taste. Whoever comes and buy this home, I love it just for the location, and it's going to redo everything you've done into your home. So let's keep that in mind that while we think this is what we have, this is what the way someone else can see it, or vice versa. We might think we have a fixture, and all of a sudden it's someone's dream home, and they overpay you for it.
And and, and then I will go and then I will go with you know follow the follow up question would be like how soon do you want this home sold? So so you you kind of always you obviously give them information and then you let them know that uh, at the end of the day no matter what the property does or does not have somebody else is going to do something else to it. Correct. Yeah. And 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 that's also you know like for for my lessons you know like whether I, what you know what do you think I should do you know I I learned in my career that telling people oh do this do this do this. It's it actually backfires because then like well you have me do all this work and my market and my property still sitting in the market so you got to know the market the market will tell you if if it's time for you to put some money into your home or you're better off just listing it at a lower price and 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 let, let it be the new listing that everybody wants to see because you priced it correctly. And final question, Arlen, have you would you say that um, when you price a property, I don't want to say cheap. But let's say competitive, you know, not a lower price. Does that property tend to sell quicker? And do do you notice buy, buyers still asking for closing credit or in, in you know incentives from the seller? Correct. So so that 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 would go depending on on, on what the seller's motivation is, right? Uh, there's people that want to be out of the home yesterday, and there's people like, well, I just want to test the market. I just want to see where it goes. If I don't get my price, I'm not selling it. You know, right. so so you got to know what you're dealing with. And and once you have that ground set, then basically you go with the, with, with the you know, you, look, this is what we can do. If you want to price your home above what all the comps are, your home is going to sit in the market for at least 90 days. That means at least three more mortgage payments that you hear. Is that OK with you? You know, that's going to hold you back 90 days from where you want to be. So so, you know, th th there's there's a quadrant, right? There, there's the present pleasure. Future pain, future, future pleasure. And then you bring them back to, you know, present pain and then you bring them back to the present. Because what you want to do is you want to focus on the next step. Like, uh, um, you know, one of my agents here had a, had a listing, right? So I sit down with her yesterday because they overpriced the listing. And and the seller is just focused on a certain price on his current home right now. The thing is, he already has in mind what the replacement property is going to be, which is bigger, better, greater location. So I said, why don't you focus on that instead of this? So you gotta you gotta take them away from focusing on the money here and discover that you're holding your family from being in a better, bigger home location-wise and everything, because you're focused on the money here. So how how much is that cost you? What's what's you know how you, your family is already checked out of this home? You're checked out of this home. You just keep on seeing the dollar sign, right? So then I told her, I said, have this conversation with her about, you know, the future home. And on top of that, you know, going into this new home, the wife is going to go back into the first place, you know, workplace. So what does that mean? Additional income. So you're so focused on pennies here that you're keeping your way yourself away from this. She had the conversation with the yesterday. They reduced the price and they put it under market value. Because now... Hey, let me take you away from here. Let me put you here for a second, because this is where you want to be, right? Yeah, this is where you want to be with family. Like, right? This is what's going to benefit you long term because your wife is going back to work, correct? Yes. So why are we worry about the money here? And and they reduce the price, and 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 surprisingly, she she called me all happy. Oh my God, you know we're ten thousand dollars under all the properties in the area. I said, okay, great. Now go market to get it sold. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So, well, so yeah. Right. So you, you gotta you gotta help people self discover what they want to do, and the best thing we can do is uh, one of the the the, the things that I do. I, I'm grateful for for you know George is here Las Casas. You know is his wisdom, right? Because he always told me he goes, Arlen, salespeople have one mouth and two ears for a reason. You talk a little bit and you listen more. So ask the questions, and as you're asking the questions. They're going to give you the answer that's going to lead to the next question that's going to go and so on. And then next thing you know, they're the ones telling you, you're right. I should listen for this price. I should do this. I should do that. Let's get it going. You know, when you can control the conversation to where you want it to go by speaking less and listening more, it's, you know, you discover how to be a great salesperson. Damn, you just got some nuggets, Jonathan. No, yeah, good, good information, good nuggets, and uh, because that's going to be, I think, uh, something that in the next couple of weeks and months is going to be a little bit of a of a of an obstacle. Mm -hmm. Properties are going to be, uh, you know, going down in price a little bit, and I think we're going to have to start uh, talking to these yeah. sellers and maybe educating them a little bit more. And I know sometimes, even for myself, I I have a little bit of a hard time wanting to say yes, Mister Seller, we have to discount it. 
because you're you're kind of in fear of lo- losing that listing, right? And some mm-hmm. sometimes agents, like Arlen said, I had to let go of two listings because they wanted to overprice it. I don't think anybody wants to let go of listings, but hey, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. Uh, here's a nugget for you guys. <clears throat> so I just fired a, a seller yesterday in Jerupa. This seller came from a postcard that I did. Uh-huh. Now I hear what you said, Jonathan, that you're scared to lose a listing. Okay, here, here, here's a nugget. If a seller is telling you, "Oh, I need you to list it at one million, and we know the property's worth nine hundred thousand, eight hundred thousand, say, you know what, Mister Seller, because I want to earn your business and I'm going to work hard to make sure I get your home sold. Why don't we do this? In our contract, we're going to put it for a million. But in the first two weeks, if I don't get that million on additional terms, we're going to put if we don't receive an offer in the first two weeks at a million price reduced to 800,000. That way it's already in the contract. And in two weeks, you already know you got to get prepared. You already know you're not going to get that million. When that two weeks comes, you don't call the seller and have a price reduction conversation because that's not going to go that very well. All you do is go in the MLS, price drop it to your price. And then if the seller calls you, you remind them, hey, remember what we said? And it's in, in writing. You told me that if I didn't get the price you wanted, we we're going to put it at the price that I think that it should be priced. Right? Jonathan? Yeah, yeah. Does very that good. answer very... your question? It does. So it does because... Um... Because, uh, yeah, when if the property doesn't sell and then you drop the price later on, obviously the seller is going to get upset that he doesn't know about it. But I think it's very good to prepare him from the, from the onset, especially if they're very adamant on having a higher price, which you happens have to a lot. Set, you have to set the expectation. S- two, set of our, the expectation. Two, of our associate, two of our associates did that, Alfred, a couple of weeks ago. They put that on the listing. If it doesn't sell uh in two 15 days two weeks we're gonna do a price reduction and they just made that call and reminded them hey we need to do a right our price reduction is coming up in the next couple of days and 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 hey like felix said two people did it i wouldn't even call that seller <laughs> i wouldn't screw that mm-hmm. it, it's okay if you want to but i personally right. won't now here's another thing when i called her yesterday i said amy it's already been three weeks only two people been showing up i think it's about time that we price reduce it to the price we had. Because she was asking me if we had an offer. She keeps asking if we have an offer. And I told her, like, hey, we got to put it on my... Oh, no, cancel the listing. I don't want to sell no more. Automatically, she got defensive. I said, well, you know what? Because she's been a pain in the butt. I just fired her. Hey, it's part of doing business. I spend $400 on photos. I'm sorry. It's just it's a part of doing business. Yeah. But I guess what? She's not my headache anymore. Mm-hmm. I have another headache in Riverside where this gentleman, I told him since the beginning, we're overpriced. You had it with another agent. Same thing. Somebody broke into his property over the weekend, and then he calls me telling me that they broke in his property. It's a million-dollar property, and this guy doesn't even have brinks. People broke into his property. Now he's telling me no showings, no open houses, <clears throat> nothing. And I talked to Felix about it. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to let the... Ex- let this expire. It's a three month contract. I'm going to let it expire. I don't need those headaches. There's people out there that need our help. Yeah. I'm not going to invest my energy in people that do not need my help. I'm going to move on. And, gotta- and the problem, Alfred, too, and I'm sure you guys have all noticed this that, you know, people in that situation are the ones that will take more of your time. Damn. Because you know, they're constantly calling you, they're constantly emailing you, they're constantly, and they expect like for you to answer the phone all the time or for you to call them right away. You're never available a lot, but you know, it comes to the point where you don't want to take those calls. Yeah, Let's very true. It comes to the point where you purposely send them to voice now. Where you purposely <laughs> like, I'll call them tomorrow. Nah, you know, so because you just don't want to deal with this. So uh, you know, if 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 you know that this is where you're going and, and this is where those two transactions are gonna be going to, I'm like, I'd rather just not do it. I'd rather let them go through all of that with somebody else, and then I come back and be like, Okay, are you ready? Absolutely. Well said. Yeah. And there's a lot of that gonna go on, guys. You know, a lot of these things are gonna be happening, I say in the next few months. Once again, just get to work. Get to work, show up. Train, listen, ask questions, ask other people from other offices what they're going through. 
I'm sure Arlen's the agencies with they're going through the same things we're going through, right, Arlen? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, they're definitely going through that, and and you know we're going through that. You know, because if you're used to so closing a certain amount of escrows and that has reduced, you know, then they we, we all we're all going through it. We're all feeling, you know, the the change of the market. Um, although I'll, I'll be honest with you, the the minute I started recognizing, okay, a lot of a lot of new listings coming up, everything's just sitting there. A lot of price reduction. I'm like, okay, good. We're just around the corner. You know, and uh. We're, Arlen, real quick, how many market shifts have you been in? And I know you've probably been in, in as long as Felix has. Yeah, um, I've, I've been in the business for, for 20 years, uh, fully licensed. And then I spent two years uh, uh, being a broker's assistant prior to that, which is kind of like I learned the business before I even got into it. Beautiful. So anybody else has any questions or anything that's holding you back from making that phone call? Remember, there's expires out there. Uh, Robert and I, we follow this guy named uh, Anthony Nucci. Super awesome, young, energetic guy. Reminds me of Jonathan. I'll send him, I'll send you guys his profile. <laughs> this guy is a caller. He's a dialer. He's calling. He sells in two different states, Michigan and Florida. And he's closing. He's building mm -hmm. a community because he's, he's doing the hard calls. He's not mm -hmm. doing the easy work. He's doing the hard calls. But, of course, people sometimes always just show the 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 outcome but they don't show the process sure. i guarantee you none of us here want to post something where people are telling us off f off don't call yeah. me no more i'm not interested the economy is going to crash i'm waiting for the election to end there's a tornado coming the aliens landed in las vegas you're yeah. always going to be hearing something and we're not going to post that we're only going to post hey just close escrow hey i'm over here with my family at disneyland hanging out doing nothing right but mm -hmm. you got to remember, sometimes we're being tested. God is testing us right now. It's hard. Like yeah. Arden told me yesterday, this market is going to weed out the people that shouldn't be here. So when the market is good, and like Arlen said, you tell that seller, hey, well, what's, what has uh, uh, Johnny sold? And you look at Johnny, didn't have any sales for three years. Now you're going to be like, oh, he's just, he's just only here when the market is good. He's mm. not here in, during the hard market, during the, the time you need to be on the trenches working mm -hmm. on yourself, filing your skills, script and role playing, which is the most powerful thing in the world, being an agent, learning how to handle every single objection, right? Don't be the yep. jack of all trades, master of none. I don't want to see none of you guys selling solar. You're a real estate <laughs> agent. Stick with one thing only. You don't need to. And, and, and here's the here's a funny thing, Alfred, because it's the solar and and the life insurance right now that, that I get right, uh, a lot of a lot of realtors are you know like being drawn into that. And the thing is, you know, those are the realtors are always looking for the next shiny item that they can make quick money on. But guess what? What do those fear? Uh, what do those jobs require? They require for you to prospect, and that's the reason why they fell at it too. Because they're not prospecting real estate, they're not prospecting for solar, they're not prospecting for life insurance. So they're back to square one. Absolutely awesome, I, Robert. I heard. I see you wanted to unmute yourself. Can you share with us what's going on with your agents over there at Houster? Yeah, so we have a few agents that are you know consistently closing. Some buyer agents that are consistently putting deals through the pipe. Uh, we have some agents who are starting out. You know, they need they need a little bit of support uh, mindset. A lot of stuff we do when we try to push is social media, right? One of the things that uh, Arlen mentioned that uh, he just took a class on social media. I think it's important that you guys do your prospecting, your calls, uh, expires, you know, put a few hours into it. But at the same time, social media is not complicated. Of course, it's going to take time to get it going. One of the things like what we do, for example, here is we make sure that we uh, support agents by out of scheduling content right, on their social media. And we always tell them that uh, that's the bare minimum, right? Uh, out of scheduling content, at least going one post uh, a day. Uh, and, and that same content we have available for free for you guys, for anybody in the Real Closers community where you can just go in and take it. Um, then we provide additional content, uh, reels, videos, you know, AI reels, content that agents can use to start promoting on their stories, uh, start promoting on their on their feed, but ultimately, you know the the goal with that process is to get agents consistent with. They need to set time aside, once a week, Sunday night, 
schedule your content out. You could do this with, you know, different tools available. You could do this with, um, you know, Meta Facebook allows you to auto schedule your content now. Uh, so you can do all that, set time aside, get consistent, continue to do everything else, set aside an hour or two once a week, push your social media, mm -hmm. and then eventually start finding out what you could do. Like one of the things that you could do right now, and a few of our agents are doing it right now, especially those with no no business, right? Because they're always complaining about what should I post about? That's going to make me unique and simple. Hey, you have access to a, a key. There are a bunch of houses that are vacant right now that you can go preview for your clients. You know, when you're doing that, uh, record yourself going into that house. Talk about that property. Learn, like Arlen said, learn your area, learn your market. What's Why would people move into that house? Not so much because of the house itself, but location. Mm -hmm. Schools nearby, uh, shopping centers. Are you targeting people who are interested in, you know, in the school district? Mm -hmm. Learn that area and market the area. Don't market the house. Right, market the area, market your pro, uh, your 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 location, and then of course, by the way, you can get into this location with this property for this much, right? And then start breaking down the process: how much you know it costs to get into a house in, in that location, uh, how much are you going to be mostly your mo uh, monthly payments, and one of the things that I always like to tell people with social media is that when you're providing information like this consistently on social media, you're attacking your sphere of influence. And you're creating a digital sphere of influence that are qualifying themselves over time. If you provide all this information over time, six months, you know, and I've seen it happen many, many times, right? Three to six months is when agents start to consistently get traffic. Uh, people asking questions. They may not be qualified. They may not be fully mm -hmm. ready. Hey, but you're getting traction another way, which is mm -hmm. social media, right? And I'm pretty sure, Arlen, some of this stuff, you probably, you know, this is what they talked about. It's not rocket science. It's just yeah. what Alfred keeps saying, consistency, consistency, consistency. You just have to put in the work. It's not, you know, real estate is not, it's not for people who they're just going to put in, you know, 30 minutes a week and, and, and then you're going to start getting business. It takes time. I mean, I've been, you know, nurturing a relationship finally after nine months, the lady wants me to put in an offer for her house and now I'm going to find out if she's really serious about selling or not, you know, because this is the cutoff time, right? For me, otherwise we move on and move on to the next, to the next prospecting. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're doing uh, expired. Uh, so that's, that's one of the things that we're doing. The, the, the team here, you know, we're, we're pushing social media a lot. Um, we have a lot of agents asking questions about, you know, the NAR settlement, right? They're, they're getting scared a little bit about their uh, buyers. You know, we, we talked about that yesterday in, in our meeting as well. And we're trying to figure out how to put training together, you know, and collaborate with, with other with other brokers and other agents to to really find out, you know, different ways to attack this issue, right? Uh, give agents confidence that, like Alfred said, don't focus on the negative, but what, what else can you do to last, you know? So we're doing different things, man. It's It's just crazy crazy times and and uh we had an interview with with an agent uh the last week where he told us that you know at the very beginning like in 2002 I, I think 2002 is when before you know the mls wasn't available to uh to to, to just regular people right you, if you wanted information on on homes you had to go through an agent and then that changed and then that was another way right and then uh COVID was another one, 2008, 2009 was another one. And it's just waves, right? You just have to learn how to write them. You need to be in, in communities like this because I think it's where you can learn a lot. Like what Arlen said today, man, that was like, uh, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that piece probably and, and start, you know, just repeating it to everybody else because it was it was gold, right? Uh, how to deal with those objections, how to deal with buyer uh, sellers not wanting to, to list for what they should be listing, right? So, Team is doing okay. Uh, we have a few agents that are closing deals consistently. We have a few agents that are starting out. We have a few agents that, you know, unfortunately they're kind of taking a step back and uh, they are trying to pay their bills. So they, they did get, you know, they, they're getting another job. Uh, but one of the things that we, we, we recommend, even if you're starting out, work on your social media. Uh, it's just the next thing that's going to get you business, right? Continue to do everything else, 
but do not forget this social media because it's going to take time. It's going to take a good three to six months of you consistently doing it before it starts to work for you. So if you continue to wait, another you continue to push that another three months, another six months, another 12 months. Well, it's going to take you another six months on top of that to get any any traction on that. Um, and you don't have to be you know, a superstar. Of course, if you are, uh, you're going to get a lot more business. But uh, if you do the bare minimum, at least get consistent, understand the, the, the algorithm, understand the likes, understand the comments, understand uh, the interactions, and then continue to push forward into the next step, which is what I said, right? Learn your market and and, and market that uh, with your in it, right? You're, you, you're, you're yourself. Yeah. Absolutely, Robert. You know, as a matter of fact, um, the uh, the study shows that 89% of humans all go to social media for quite some time on a daily basis. I, 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 I can almost guarantee that every single person in, in this chat room right now already went to social media <laughs> for today. You know what I mean? And so I, I've been um, on this since three o'clock. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, so with that in mind, know, know, know how much time you're spending on it, but what time are you spending on it? You know what I mean? That's that's the difference. Like, you know, you can put yourself into all the classrooms, all this, all that, and all you become is a professional student if you don't come and implement what you're learning. At the end of the day, that let's let's just call it what it is, right? And and I and I know some of those agents and and and, and I have that hard conversation with them, be like, I'm really sorry, but you're a professional student. One of them got upset and I said, I, I understand you have to work through your emotions on your own, <laughs> but I'm just telling you the truth. You're going to every single class. But every time I call you, if you prospect, you're not prospecting. So you're not implementing what you're doing. And this is going to, it's already hurt you and it's going to hurt you even more. So just start implementing these things, right? Um, so, so you know, just social media, social media is big. Uh, you know, that doesn't mean that, you know, content expires and all that stuff doesn't work. That works. You just have to spend the time, you know, making making those reels, making those stories. And uh, one of the best things, Robert, that, you know, like you said, is basically the content wise, tell people, be you. Be you 100%. We have an agent here that turned her business around. She's getting leads on a daily basis of her content because first she was just doing all these mansion, big houses and blah, blah. People weren't connecting. Then, you know, then it turns out, you know, her and her husband, they're both realtors. They have this, you know, this, this beautiful ranch-like home in, in Paris that sits on two acres. So then she, all of a sudden, you know, she took a class. She says she started implementing it. She says, okay, I got to be me. So she goes, she's like, you know, I don't know if you guys know about this about me, but I live in a ranch-like property. We have chickens. We have this. We have goats. <laughs> so she walked around her property. All of a sudden, she, her her leads just started flowing. People were like, "I want that," <laughs> you know. And, and and so then she started not connecting people, and she's putting like getting listed, getting listings, not even just in in her area, but out of the area because people are like, "Hey, that's what I want," and I think I'm ready for it. Can you tell me what my home is worth, and what can I replace it with? So her business turned around, but just basically being her. So being herself, like Alfred right now, you know, it'd be like, you know, like in the real through that, <laughs> you know, Alfred before having, you know, I call him uh, Gaito Jr., his baby, uh, you know, he he was a girl's dad, you know, he could have made a, he could have been, you know, girl's dad realtor, you know, he could have just marketed that for a while, you know, and, and then, and then, you know, and then like, oh, well now I have a son, I'm not a, just a girl dad anymore. Well, guess what? That's turning now, turn the page into the new chapter. And and now start promoting yourself, like, you know, like I finally got my board, you know, what what life is like, you know, you know, having a son now. And and so this is the way I would connect. I would connect with with, with Alfred like that because I have a daughter and I have a, and I have a son. And I was very involved in their life. So me seeing videos about Alfred spending, you know, uh, uh putting a couple of stories about his family, I will connect with Alfred just based on that. You know, I don't just always want to see Alfred like. You know, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell. You just become another salesperson. Have people connect with you with who you really are. You know, it's funny you say that, Arlen. We had that talk about, about Pablo. Yeah. His Frenchie, his dog. And, and why do you know about Pablo? Because you've seen the videos when I walk him, you know, I'll I, I put pictures about him. And you even remember his name. <laughs> and, and not you only know. that, I think I told you guys about the realtor up there in, in the Rose Bowl. His my good friend Jason from Compass Group. Now this guy is consistent. What he does, here's a nugget. What he does, he goes to the Rose Bowl every morning at 6 a.m. He set us up table with his marketing. He puts all the listings that are in Pasadena, Arcadia, in that area, which are overall over a million. And he has water bottles with his name on it. 
He has doggy snacks, and he has snacks for the for the runners. Plus, in front, this is what's going to gravitate people to his table. He puts up dog water bowls. Now, right now, it's summertime. Dogs get thirsty. The pavement is hot. He puts all these water bowls so when the, the owners are walking their dogs, the dog automatically walks to the water bowl. And then the people connect with him in the real estate side, but he's attracting them with water bowls and dog snacks for dogs so that the dogs stay dehydrated at the Rose Bowl. And Arlen and I live before by the Rose Bowl. There's hundreds and maybe thousands that go there every single day. Right, Arlen? Yeah, and there's your usuals too. These are joggers, runners, uh, golfers. I mean, and not only that, guys, the Rose Bowl, they have so many events in that venue. There's always people at the Rose Bowl. That's where I learned how to drive a car in the parking lot. That's where I learned how to drive a motorcycle in that parking lot. So there's always somebody at the Rose Bowl. So there's trails around us. There's trails, hiking trails. There's trails everywhere we're at. Think about this. If you were to go set up a table right now at a trail where people are doing stairs or all that, and all you do is put a simple table, you buy cheap a cheap case of waters from Target, 32 bottles for four bucks. You buy two of those cases a day. That's a probably $8 investment. You go set up early at a hiking trail and you put a water market bibs. They have all this stuff they sell on realestate.com or a sticker that you could put your business card. And all you do is pass off free water bottles to hikers and people that are already going there. You don't think you're going to stand out and they're going to call you or they're going to think about something or it's going to have a conversation about a real estate agent being super cool, giving away water bottles at a hiking trail right now. Think about that for a little bit. That is a marketing tool right there, a marketing trick. Now, I don't know who's going to do it. I wish I had a little bit more time to test it out, but I see there are other people doing it. You know, you, you have the, the Claremont, uh, Claremont Loop close by, right, Alfred? Yeah, the thing with right now, Claremont Loop, just so you guys know, I talked to Felix. We used to go there every Thursday. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're having a huge rattlesnake problem. Mm -hmm. They open it and close it. If it's a fire, they close it. If it's a rainy day, they close it. So we don't know, if, even if we plan out for it, we don't know if they're going to open it or close it. Claremont Loop. So I'm probably gonna look for somewhere else where I believe above baseline there's a there's a trail where a trail that runs like it's just a, a running trail, uh, and check it out where people are going to hike or people are going to do yoga. But Claremont Loop is a great area. I mean, I used to love. I used to have a hiking club called the LA Hikers at Griffith Observatory. I used to do a mastermind hike, and we used to be 20, 10 of us, and we used to go hiking up the trail. Or Etiwanda Falls, like Alex says, Etiwanda Falls. I haven't been there yet, um, but those are things that you guys can do for free, and it doesn't cost you anything. All it's doing is costing you a little bit of time and maybe $10 on water bottles, two cases of water bottles that you can go get right now at, at La Cura. Where else? Uh, you could go get it at Target. You could go get it anywhere else. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, these Mexican... Uh, so were, you, were you just going to say La Curacao? I, I, I was about to say La Curacao and shit. I was thinking, of, you know what it is, Arlen? We had this guy come and talk about furniture at Matthews Brothers. Yes. And, uh, but hey, those are little nuggets. I did yeah. record this call today because I knew Arlen was going to drop some nuggets. I knew Robert was going to drop some nuggets. And once again, guys, we're all going through this storm together. You just got to gotta just ask questions right now to speed up, speed up the process to get yeah. your next deal. No. But it's only going to happen when you show up to communities like this. Sometimes we got 10 people. Sometimes we got 20. Sometimes we have 40. Today we had, I saw we had almost 19 people today. And hey, there's people that want this are going to show up. People that are, don't want this are not going to show up. And that's okay. You got to do what's you. Like I told you, you are a business. When do you open? When do you close? What are your features, advantages, and benefits of working with you? And you need to know that because right now, like Mark, like Arlen said, the market's gonna have a little shift. You gotta be ready. You gotta be prepared. So when it happens, if it's a buyer's market, a seller's market, whatever market it is, you adapt to that and you're ready to go. You know. And one thing that I just learned is, you know what, Arlen, you're right. Maybe I should be posting about my little gallito, and I'm gonna do that more. And yeah. not only that, I'm gonna post of where a community where I live at. I haven't done that because sometimes I get caught up on being too salesy. Let me be the first one to tell you. I do. 
I do become too salesy and I have to think about that stuff sometimes. I could tell the people the struggle, how it took me six years to get to where I am right now, driving four hours a day from Santa Clarita to the Indian Empire for six years without complaining. And during those six years, I can tell you a lot of stories, accidents, fires, trucks literally falling from the, the 214 freeway on the five freeway when I was driving home, the day that Kobe crashed. I can make so many stories that day that, that the helicopter crashed. I worked a late night shift that day and it was real foggy that day. And I remember driving home because we had the, the Academy Awards and we had to get the room ready. And then I went to sleep and when I woke up, I started hearing Kobe died, Kobe died. And once I heard it on Ryan Seacrest, I knew like, holy shit. So guys, there's a lot of stuff going on, on right now. You got to be the CNN of your life, of your business. Don't let CNN dictate your, your business or anything that's going on around you. But before we end this call, because I like to respect everybody's time, it's open mic. However you guys want to close it, share what, any nuggets you got, go for it. I, I'll just say this, guys. You know, be be, be the be the source, be the source of of information for your clients. Don't, don't let them go because I guarantee you, if you just take five of your past clients and look at the profiles, they probably follow all the realtors, and they follow all the realtors because a realtor probably is a friend of yours and saw them and send a friend's request and they accept it. You know, so they be the source, be the source because don't ever think like, oh, they, they're loyal to me. They're going to be loyal to whoever brings them a deal. They're going to be loyal to whoever gets in front of them consistently. You know, this is, you know, uh, you know, it's not someone flirting with your wife or your husband. <laughs> you know, just because they're your husband or your wife doesn't mean it's a done deal, right? you got to keep watering that plant. you got to consistently, you know, stay in that relationship. So with, with your clients, that's what you got to be. you got to be the source for them and the people that they know.